Welcome to the New Testament Bible study presented by the Gatlinburg Church of Christ. I'm David Barton. The Apostle Paul, writing to the young man Timothy, encouraged him to rightly divide the word of truth. Now, Paul's encouragement both then and even now is to know and to study uh, God's word. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, is profitable for reproof, is profitable for correction, is profitable for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly furnished, equipped for every good work. Our goal for this study is to focus on and better understand the New Testament epistles written by Paul and John and Peter and others. Open your Bible now and let's study together. But first, let's pause for a word of prayer. Let's begin with the word of prayer. Would you bow with me, please? Father in heaven, we're thankful and grateful for the privilege and the opportunity to study. Thankful, Father, for the blessings that we find in your Son and through Him. Thankful, Father, that in, from all of eternity, you have chosen to bless all of mankind through your, your Son, our Savior. Bless us as we study this morning, this day. Continue to be with us in all that we do. In Jesus' name, and then amen. Welcome to the New Testament Bible study. Our lesson today is taken again from the first chapter of Ephesians, beginning today with verse 7. In the opening verses of this uh, chapter 1, Paul declared that all spiritual blessings are found in the Lord Jesus Christ. That third verse is the key verse to the Ephesian letter. In the first two verses, Paul extends grace and peace from God. At verse 7, he begins to enumerate the spiritual blessings of being in Christ. And that's where our lesson text will pick up this morning. Read with me Ephesians 1, beginning at verse 7. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of His grace which He made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of His will, according to His good pleasure, which He purposed in Himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times He might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in Him. In Him we also have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of Him who works all things according to the counsel of His will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of His glory. Notice verse 7. In Him, in Jesus Christ, there is hope. In Him, there is redemption through His blood. In Him, there is the forgiveness of sins. To, re to be redeemed by Jesus Christ is to be rescued, rescued from sin and Satan. Remember Colossians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. Paul on that occasion writes, God has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son, in whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Again, this is all in accordance with the riches of God's grace. There is an acronym that helps in remembering God's grace. It's the letters of the word itself, G-R-A-C-E. God's riches at Christ's expense. Now listen to that again. God's riches at Christ's expense. In verse 6 of our lesson text, verse 8 of our lesson text rather, Paul says that God has caused the riches of God's grace to abound to us. The word that Paul uses for abound conveys the meaning of an abundance, an overflowing of the richness of God's grace. And this overflowing and abundance of God's grace is in all wisdom and prudence. Now true wisdom and true prudence is of God and is revealed through the Scriptures. Verse 9 says that God has made known to us the mystery of His will. Now when Paul uses the word mystery as he does in this context, he is not referring to something that is still unknown. Instead, he is referring to a, a secret which was once unknown, but now has been revealed. Paul is saying that God has revealed His will 
to us according to His good pleasure. This is all a part of God's eternal plan, a plan which He purposed in Himself. Now notice verse 10, that the, in the dispensation of the fullness of times, He might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in Him. In the fullness of time, God would gather all things together in Jesus Christ. Remember the reading from Galatians chapter 4 uh, at verse 4? But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth His Son made of a woman, made under the law. In the fullness of time, at the right time, implies that God had set a time schedule from all of eternity, a season for all of the events of history according to His will and according to His good pleasure. Paul says that God has gathered all things together in Jesus Christ. And notice for emphasis he says, all things in heaven and all things on earth. This is the key to understanding God's purpose. Unity in and through Jesus Christ, His Son. Turn with me to Colossians, uh, that first chapter, and I'll begin the reading at verse 13. Colossians chapter 1, beginning at verse 13. Now, He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by Him all things were created that are in heaven and are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through Him and for Him. And He is before all things. And He and in Himself all things consist. And He is the head of the body, the church who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself, by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. All things are reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. Remember what Jesus says about Himself in John chapter 14. At that sixth verse, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father except by Me. Now in verse 11 of our lesson text, Paul says in Christ, we have an inheritance. Turn with me to 1 Peter this time. And listen as the Apostle Peter describes the inheritance that we have from God. 1 Peter chapter 1, and I'll begin the reading at verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than, than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom, having not seen, you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Our salvation, according to the Apostle Peter, is incorruptible. It's undefiled. It will not fade away. It is reserved in heaven Remember the key verse of the Ephesians letter as we noted in our last study? Verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. For you see, friend, all spiritual blessings are found in Jesus Christ. 
Again, Paul makes reference to, to God's choosing, to His predestination. He says, all is in accordance with God's will and God's purpose. Our inheritance is through obedience and submission to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Romans 1.16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it, the gospel, is the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also for the Greek. Now notice the last part of verse 11 in our lesson text. Who works all things according to the counsel of His will. For see, our inheritance, our salvation is all according to God's will, not man's will. For see, God is still in charge of all things. He is the Creator. At verse 12, Paul says that we who first trusted in Christ, and the reference is to the Jew on, in that occasion, and in the next verse he will say that you, speaking of the Gentiles, also trusted. And what Paul is saying is God's people then and now should be to the praise of His glory. God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Jesus Christ. Recognizing that He has done... For, for us, our life should be such as to bring praise, honor, and glory to God. And Paul goes on to say that you also trusted in God, a trust that was based on hearing the word of truth, hearing the gospel of your salvation. In Romans 10, verse 17, Paul writes, So faith then comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The context of the Ephesian letter is being in Christ. Those who have heard the word of truth and have obeyed the gospel are, in fact, in Christ. So Paul says you have rightly put your trust in Christ for your inheritance and for the salvation of your souls. Friend, for you and I today to become heirs of all the spiritual blessings that are found in Jesus Christ, including our salvation, we too, like those early Christians, must accept Him as our Savior. Friend, for you and I today to become an heir of all the spiritual blessings that are found in Jesus Christ, including our salvation, we too, just like those early Christians, must accept Him as our Savior. Remember Galatians chapter 3 and how we do just that, how we access and accept Jesus Christ? Verses 26 and 27 for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Remember Jesus' instructions in Mark chapter 16? And Jesus said unto them, Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Notice, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Those instructions have not changed. Remember Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that applies also to Jesus' teachings, including the plan of salvation. For you see, it has not changed through the years either. It too is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The gospel is still the power of God that leads to salvation. For you see, man cannot change the word of Almighty God. Remember what Paul writes by inspiration in the book of Romans, chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it, in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith unto faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Friend, if you have questions about your salvation, please contact us at the Gatlinburg Church of Christ. We would love to sit down and talk with you about the gospel plan of salvation as revealed in the pages of the New Testament. Thank you for studying with us today. Thank you for watching the New Testament Bible study. If you have comments or questions about today's study, write to us at the Gatlinburg Church of Christ, P.O. Box 361, Gatlinburg, Tennessee, 37738. If you would like a free Bible correspondence course, send an email to biblestudy at gatlinburgchurchofchrist.com. 
We invite you to join us in person.